The propellant loading process will wrap up in two steps. Stage one lock load is complete. The first stage just finished the liquid oxygen loading and second stage will wrap up about one minute from now. In addition to RP1 and liquid oxygen, cryogenic helium is loaded onto Falcon 9. Falcon 9's tanks are pressurized using that helium and the helium must be chilled to remain compatible with the remaining cryogenic plumbing. During flight, the pressurization force from the helium helps to force propellant into the engines as the tanks empty. As we await the completion of stage two liquid oxygen loading, minus 60 second mark, Falcon 9 will enter startup. At that point, the rocket's onboard flight computers will take over. And from there on out, the countdown is fully autonomous. Just inside of T minus two seconds, the nine Merlin 1D engines will ignite. Once they're full Stage power, two, load is complete. Falcon 9 will lift off the pad and begin its climb to orbit. And we just heard confirmation that liquid oxygen loading for the second stage is complete, which completes the propellant equation for stage two. At this point, you've probably noticed the white clouds venting from the rocket. That comes from the super cold oxygen gas on board. When oxygen is vented overboard and interacts with the warmer outside air, it condenses into clouds. It's the same principle as seeing your breath on a cold morning, just on a much larger scale. Weather continues to be green, yeah, yeah, tracking a 2% possibility of launch weather constraints for our scheduled liftoff at 2.16 p.m. Eastern Time. The gas closeout process is underway, which refers to venting and shutting down gaseous systems such as topping off the tanks and sealing vents to maintain pressure. Now we're standing by for confirmation that Falcon 9 will enter startup at the T-minus one minute mark. Falcon 9 is in startup. At this point, the autonomous flight computers have taken over the launch countdown and stages one and two are pressing for launch. Let's listen in to the launch director's final go. MD is go for launch. As you heard, we are go for launch. Let's listen in to the final seconds of the countdown. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and it's full power, and lift off. Go Falcon, go Inral 77. Vehicles pitching down range. Ever do chamber pressure, no, no. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And in just a few seconds, we'll throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, which stands for maximum dynamic pressure. It's the moment in the Power launch telemetry nominal. when the vehicle experiences the greatest mechanical stress that it will see during its ascent. To help go from vertical to horizontal, the first stage also performed a gravity turn where the engine's gimbal Falcon small amount supersonic to turn the first stage from going straight up to horizontal with the help of gravity. Eventually, Falcon 9 will be roughly horizontal to Earth as we achieve orbit. Max Q. Falcon 9 has just passed through Max Q, and the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avo avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. You can track our progress to kill. orbit by watching the left corner of your display, which is showing first stage velocity and altitude. We have several events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear them all called out by mission control. These include main engine cutoff, or MECO, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and boost back burn. Main, main engine cutoff is when we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. Stage one flip is when the booster uses its nitrogen gas thrusters to flip the booster around. 
Next, second engine start one, we will light the NBAC engine on stage two for the first time, and after that is boost back burn, when the engines will light to place stage one on a trajectory towards the landing zone. So keep an eye out for these events happening back to back. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back startup. And there we had conclusion of that quick series of events, which again were main engine and cutoff, startup. second uh, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, the MVAC engine, and the start of the boost back burn. Coming up next will be fairing separation in just a few seconds. The fairing will jettison away from the second stage as, as it is no longer required to protect the payload once we're in space. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that confirmation of fairing separation. As we mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once they fall back to Earth. Stage one boost back shut down. Stage one has concluded its first of three burns on its way back to Earth with the confirmation of boost back shutdown. This has properly oriented Falcon 9 for its return trajectory. And we're currently just past three minutes and 40 seconds into today's mission. The next major milestone is coming up at the T plus six minute and 44 second mark when you should see the first stage's entry burn on your screen. To start the entry burn, we will relight three of the nine M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center engine, known as E9, followed by E1 and E5. The booster engine graphic on the right-hand corner of your screen displays... Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Great confirmation, both vehicles on nominal trajectory. The booster engine graphic there on the right-hand corner displays the arrangement of the nine M1D engines with an outer ring of eight and a center ninth engine. These are held in place on the vehicle by a structure called the octaweb. And again, three of these will light during the upcoming entry burn. The entry burn is similar to pumping the brakes to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. And we need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces. This helps us to recover and ultimately reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but the vehicle is still moving really fast. This causes it to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel, RP-1, that Falcon 9 uses. With each flight, that layer of soot builds up a little bit more on the surface of the vehicle, and that's why our flight-proven vehicles look the way they do. Now we are still just over a minute away from the beginning of the entry burn. You can see on the left-hand corner of the screen, the first stage is decelerating as it makes its way back to Earth. The first stage is not only going to use the Merlin engines for re-entry and landing, it will also use the titanium grid fins and nitrogen gas thrusters for stability and control. Falcon 9 is attempting a re-landing today back on land at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's Landing Zone 2. As a reminder, at the request of our customer, we will not be displaying any views of Stage 2 for today. Falcon 9's reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, enabling more investments in critical space infrastructure. It allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the launch vehicle, which in turn drives down the cost of going to space, making missions like today's possible for more organizations and more often. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission will be performing this upcoming entry burn for its fourth time. Now we're about 10 seconds away from the beginning of entry burn. And again, we'll be relighting three of the nine M1D engines. Stage one, entry burn startup. 
There's that call out for the startup of the entry burn on Falcon 9's first stage. This is set to last about 15 seconds. And again, we're slowing the vehicle down in preparation for its final burn and landing. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. The entry burn has shut down on the Falcon 9 first stage. Coming up next will be the first stage landing burn about one minute from now. The Merlins on Falcon's first stage are optimized for sea level, and these each achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. They provide the initial power to lift Falcon 9 out of the lower, thicker part of Earth's atmosphere. In comparison, the single MVAC engine on the second stage has a much wider nozzle, and it's optimized stage to perform in, terminal guidance. in space, producing about 220,500 pounds of thrust has saved. in a vacuum condition. Stage one transonic. In about 10 seconds, we'll have the start of the landing burn for the first stage. This is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing. We should be hearing that call out shortly. Stage two stage FTS one. has saved. Stage one landing burn. The landing burn has started up on Falcon 9's first stage. This is the final burn the booster will see prior to landing. Stage one landing leg deploy. Nominal orbit insertion. Stage one landing confirmed. And there we have another successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage. As a reminder, we will not be showing any stage two or deployment views at the request of our customer. So with that landing of the Falcon 9 booster, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close. We'd like to thank the Space Systems Command and National Reconnaissance Office for entrusting us with today's mission. And we would also like to thank the Range and FAA for their support. If you're interested in more launch coverage, head over to spacex.com forward slash launches for the most up-to-date information. When you're there, check out our departure board with all the details of our upcoming missions. Remember to follow at SpaceX on X for more updates. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time.